Thank you, nurse. Big crap. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, please hold the applause. <laughs> Get me off my back, Rob. Please hold the applause. <laughs> hold the applause. Smile at Rob. Please, one more time. I was going to smile at you. All right, welcome to the student athletes from the Creighton Blue Jays. Mr. Kaluma is sitting to closest to me, then Mr. O'Connell and Mr. Hawkins. We will take questions from the room for the student athletes, and then if there are any from those joining us on Zoom, we will entertain those after questions in the room have been exhausted. Let's start in the room, questions for the student athletes, starting on the left. Jimmy Watkins, Omaha World Herald. All right, we'll get the Adam questions out of the way here. Um, you mentioned on Sunday that the last time you guys played, you guys were playing one-on-one, -on -one and you ended up busting his nose. I was listening back, and I was like, wait, what? So, so how, what led up to that? How did that happen? Uh, we were in a really intense game. I think this was the last game going in. Like, we were at our last spot, and I come down after making a layup, and my elbow hits him directly on his nose, and he was leaking. So. That's what happened when I busted his nose through. The right. Matt Foster, KUTV. Uh, Ryan, Alex, being seniors, has it kind of set in that the end of the road is right around the corner? And are you trying to just you know soak up every last minute of, of these experiences? Go ahead, Mr. O'Connell, first. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely in the back of our minds as seniors, but I think we were trying to use it as motivation and use it as fuel to, you know, extend this uh, last year as long as we can and, you know, win as many games as we can down this tournament stretch. All right. And Mr. Hawkins? Uh, it's just a lot different for me, so I'm kind of trying to make sure I'm enjoying it and enjoying the moment. Uh, it's the biggest stage in basketball, and so, uh, you know, coming from the D2 level, I'm just trying to make sure I enjoy the experience. Uh, but kind of like Alex said, um, we're not just here to experience it. We're here to win some games and have a little bit of fun while we're here, so. That's our attitude going towards it. Mr. Kluma, being a freshman, do you feel like you're trying to play for your elder statesman here, knowing that it could be their last time playing for Creighton? I mean, definitely. I want my guys, to, all my teammates, to be successful. And having a successful senior year is the epitome of great basketball. And I want, them to, I want to share that with the team and share it with my seniors as well. Back on the left. Alex, the the leading scorer for San Diego State, Matt Bradley, kind of a unique build, 6'4", 220, broad shoulder, dude. What's the challenge of, of guarding somebody like that? Um, yeah, I mean, he's a good, he's definitely a good playmaker. He, he creates his shots off the dribble and off the jab and uses pump fakes. So, I mean, it's going to be a team effort trying to, you know, hold him and limit, it, limit his points tomorrow. So, I mean, we've, we've kind of game planned around that, you know, just it's going to come down to who's ready and who plays tougher tomorrow. Arthur, in a game like this where both you guys and San Diego State are do so well on the defensive end, how important is each possession going to be in a game like this that will probably be a, a grind it out, every point matters? I mean, in every game of college basketball, each possession really does matter. This one especially, I mean, we're both very good defensive teams. So we should see, like, we'll just see who's the better man that day. I mean, but I know we should pull it out. Ryan, you guys have, have called the Big East Defensive Player of the Year. They've got Nathan Mensah, the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. When you guys watch him on film, what makes him um, a force on uh, uh, protecting the rim and do whatever, whatever else he does there? Yeah, uh, long and athletic, a lot like Kalkbrenner. Um, so he changes a lot of shots around the rim. Uh, so we've, you know, we've played quite a few guys like that in the Big East, and we're going to have to do it again today. We're going to have to get into the lane and create for others. So uh, while he's a great, great shot blocker, um, we played against a lot of really good shot blockers this uh, this year. Alex, with younger guys like our, like Trey, um, like Roddy, who really haven't played in this setting before, what's kind of the advice you give to them to try and block out all the noise, all the you know fanfare that comes with playing in this tournament? Um, I mean. My advice to them would just be continue to play the, the way that they've been playing. I mean, these, these freshmen have played like grown men all season, especially with the adversity that we've handled and with Nemhard going down and Trey and Art and these young guys stepping up. So, 
I mean, for them to just continue to play the basketball that they played is, has been really good for us. And so that would be my advice. Art, what did you learn um, from your brother about, about uh, work ethic? And I've, I've heard that he was a very studious player growing up. What did you learn about him? Uh, my brother was always like the hardest worker everywhere he went. And it's something I look forward, like I looked up to growing up. I mean, I looked up, he's the reason why I play basketball today. Cause I used to go and watch him play his games and I'd see his approach to the game and his professionalism when it came to stuff like getting shots up on your own, really focusing on defense, watching film. And it was just inspirational to me and it really got me into the sport. All right, anyone else in the room? Okay, back on the left. They're, Alex, they're a great shooting team percentage-wise. I think they're 36% as a team. Um, how does that change your guys' responsibility on the perimeter, knowing you have to kind of keep, keep a hand close at all times? Um, yeah, I mean, we've kind of like Hawk said about playing against the shot blockers. I mean, playing in the Big East, you get a good feel for that. You know, some of the teams we played against later down the stretch were really good three-point shooting teams. So, you know, it doesn't really change our approach, but, you know, we're mentally preparing for that, and we know that that's a key to the game. Ryan, being one of those older leaders in the locker room, what's kind of the sense that you get from this team heading into tomorrow? Is it, is it loose? Is it a little nerves, a little confidence, some of each? I'd say it's pretty consistent with what we've had all year. We have a really energetic group. Uh, who they don't understand fear. They're just not afraid of anything. They don't, the moment's never too big for them, and that's really cool to see. Uh, so, I mean, last night at the hotel, we were all nice and loose, hanging out. And you know, even today at practice, we were joking around beforehand. So I think the, I think the feeling's the same as any other game has been this year. Uh, but now it's winter go home, so we got to make sure we're ready for tomorrow. Okay. Back left, a little new blood in the room. Apologies, you've been asked this before, but for any of you, um, when you look at film on San Diego State, do you see a little bit of yourselves in the, sen in the sense that they play a lot of defense and sometimes struggle on offense and just kind of will their way to wins? Let's start with closest to me with Mr. Kaluma. Um, yeah, their defense is definitely something to brag home about. Uh, offensive, I don't see a lot of similarities. I mean, we got a lot of shooters and we facilitate offense just like any other team. So I feel like we should, like there's not a lot of similarities between us and them besides defense. Mr. O'Connell. Um, yeah, I think <clears throat> we've played some games where it was defense, like the last game we just played against Villanova. I mean, it was pretty good defense against defense. So, I mean, we're just going to take the shots that they give us and, you know, try to play our defense and, you know, it'll be a good matchup. Okay. And Mr. Hawkins. Uh, I think X's and O's, there's not a lot of similarities. Um, not a lot of similarities in, as far as the scheme that we're trying to do defensively. Um, but I think the identity and the DNA of the teams are very similar as far as uh, we're going to slow we're going to slow it down, grind it out defensively, uh, and we're just going to play harder than you. So I would say that's a very big similarity between us two. You guys have played a lot. I think Mac called them wrestling matches. Those kind of games where you know it's low scoring and, and slow pace for any of you guys. What does it What does it take to win those kinds of games? Let's start uh, with Mr. Hawkins. Uh, those games, you got to maximize every offensive possession you get. Um, and when you get numbers in transition, we have to make sure we execute that, and we got to make sure we take care of the ball. Uh, but the biggest thing is in those kind of games, you got to make sure you get the D board. Don't give up second chance points. That's where the momentum starts to kind of slip. And I felt like down the stretch of this season, we've done a great job of that as a team. Mr. O'Connell, you want to follow up on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, coach calls them, or we call them rock fights, but uh, yeah, I mean, we've won a few of those games this year, and like Hawk said, it's, it's important to value every possession because you never know which one can determine the outcome of the game. Okay, Mr. Kaluma, you want to complete the thought? I mean, yeah, it just comes down to who breaks first, who makes the most mistakes, and who has the stronger mental fortitude. Great, okay. Anything else? Okay, not seeing any questions on Zoom right now, so. Guys, we'll let you go. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you.
Head Coach Greg McDermott, the Creighton Blue Jays, joining us now. And again, we'll take questions in the room and follow that up with questions from Zoom if there are, in fact, any. Coach, if you'd like to begin with an opening statement. Well, we're thrilled to be here. Uh, this probably wasn't in the cards uh, in the middle of November, or middle of December, maybe even the middle of January. Uh, but this, this team has just continued to improve. Uh, they've continued to develop an unbelievable connection that I think is the, the biggest reason that, that I'm sitting here today. Um, we've, we've been through a lot of adversity over the course of the season, and it's, it's brought this group closer together. Uh, and they've, you know, they've figured out a ways, ways to win. Uh, we had to kind of reinvent ourselves at the start of the season. Uh, we had to do it again uh, when we lost Ryan Nemhart for the year. Um, and this, uh, this group continues to impress me with their attention to detail um, and, the, and the way that they, they play for each other. So we're excited to be here. Obviously, we got a heck of a challenge in San Diego State. Uh, there's a lot of really good defensive teams in the Big East uh, that we face on a nightly basis, and uh, they look like the West Coast version of those teams. So uh, we're going to have our hands full, but uh, certainly excited about the opportunity. All right, we'll start with questions here in the room. Begin on the left. Jimmy Watkins, Omaha World Herald. Mac, how do you help guys manage their emotions going into a, a stage like this? You know, it's an incredible stage, but so is semifinal night or final night in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we just experienced that a week ago and you know, they handled it with flying colors. So I, I don't, uh, I really haven't had to worry about it. Um, you know, I think they're, I think this is a grounded group. I think they understand who we are and what we have to do to be successful. Uh, but, you know, I, I think what we went through, you know, you know, last week and to play, uh, you know, Providence on Friday night, which was essentially a road game for us in Madison Square Garden and win and then go to the wire in another road game against Villanova at Madison Square Garden on Saturday and lose in the last couple minutes. I think that prepared us for anything we're going to see this week. On the right. Matt Foster, KETV. Mac, in this day and age of transfers, I'm, I'm sure it's tough to you know, find guys that fit the culture of your program to go along with the talent. How have guys like Hawk and AOC embodied the culture that you guys have here at Creighton? Yeah, you know, we, we decided last spring, uh, you know, with, this, with the new transfer rules, you either, you know, to, to use an NBA term, you either build through the draft or you build through, found, or through uh, free agency. Uh, and, you know, we chose for the most part to go through the draft, and we signed a five-person freshman class. Uh, that was one of the best recruiting classes in our, in our history. And obviously those, those, those guys that have played have, have certainly lived up to that billing. But, you know, the, the addition of Alex last year, uh, knowing that, you know, the plan was he was going to sit out last year until they changed the rule, and we knew we were going to lose Mitch and DJ and, and Denzel, um, and we're going to need some experience to fill that void. That's why Alex is here. Um, and the experience that he was able to gain last year, even though it was 10, 12 minutes a game off the bench, really prepared him for the role that he needed to play this year. But, you know, he uh, had been someone in his career that, you know, played a limited role off the bench, uh, was more of a spacer on offense. Um, and then you got a guy like Keyshawn Fizel, who was, you know, was at Mississippi State, didn't play a significant role there, went to McNeese there and played a significant role there. Now he's back with us and playing a backup role to Ryan Kalkbrenner. And <clears throat> their perspective, because of the experiences they've had in their career, has been awesome for our young guys as they go through the peaks and valleys of trying to figure out how to be a successful college student athlete. Uh, and then you bring Ryan Hawkins into the picture, who's had you know, one of the more decorated careers at any level in college basketball. And him being able to share what worked for him at the Division II level and bring it to our program, uh, bring the daily work ethic, the daily energy, the, the consistent leadership. Uh, those three have been, they've been remarkable, remarkable. I couldn't have asked for better pieces of the puzzle than Alex and Keyshawn and, and Hawk because they've all brought different things. They've all brought a different perspective from where they came from. And I think, I think they are 
hugely responsible for the development of the young players in our program because they've been there to listen, they've been there to mentor, um, and it's, it, it's the reason that you've seen R2 and, and Trey and, and Arthur grow at such a rapid pace. Guy like Bradley, who can, who can and will pull up from anywhere on the court. What's the challenge of defending a guy like that? Yeah, it's hard. You know, we we see guys in our league that are, you know, running off screens and uh, they're out in transition attacking. Um, but Bradley's one of the better isolation players that we've faced this year. Um, he's got a, you know, a lot of tricks in his bag, being able to shot fake and jab and shot fake and jab, and you have to stay disciplined. Uh, to, to try to make his shots as difficult as possible and also understand he's going to make some difficult shots. He's a, he's a hard shot maker and he's blessed with that ability. So, you know, we just, we've got to keep him off the free throw line. Uh, you know, he's, he's shot a fair amount of free throws. I think that's really important, find him in transition. But, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's one of the better guards we have faced this year. Hi, Greg. Bryce Miller from the San Diego Union Tribune. Um, you guys were in the Sweet 16. You've won games in the tournament as a program four times since 2012. Is there like a key ingredient or something you can pinpoint that gets you over the top as a program, uh, not just getting to tournaments, but winning tournaments or tournament games? Well, it starts with good players. <laughs> that helps. Uh, and, you know, and it takes a little good fortune uh, because the reality of it is, is, you know, you, as we sat there in Selection Sunday and we thought, you know, we're probably in that eight, nine seed, seven, eight, nine seed range, and you looked at the possible opponents, it's like, well, they're good, and they're good, and they're good, and they're good. Like, everybody's good. So, you know, you have to have your A game. And, uh, you know, part of the reason I really like this team is I think this is the best defensive team we've had. Uh, and I think defense travels. But, uh, you know, last year's team, we won a really close game against UC Santa Barbara in the first game. We made a couple free throws late in that game, and, you know, they missed a shot in the paint on the buzzer. And then that allowed us to get to the sweet, you know, get to the round of 32 and win that game against Ohio. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, our program's gotten better. We've invested in our program. Uh, the administration has been terrific uh, of providing us the resources necessary to kind of, you know, to get to a point where we can be successful is one thing, and then to maintain it, it takes a heck of a commitment as well. And we've been fortunate that, that the university administration, the athletic administration, and our community have bought into that and have helped us stay relevant um, in, you know, in a very good college basketball landscape. And when you are winning games in the NCAA tournament, do you notice how that manifests, manifests itself in terms of maybe in the living room of recruits, or how does the conversation change when you're winning games? It, it certainly helps. Uh, you know, we're, we're blessed to have incredible attendance of, you know, in the top five in the country several years in a row now. Uh, so, that, you know, that's young people want to play in front of big crowds. And uh, we're, we're able to provide that on a yearly basis. So that's, that's really helped us. But there's no question success breeds success. And uh, you know, we, we finished in the top four in the Big East, which is, I think, one of the best basketball leagues in the country now, six years in a row. Uh, so you know, we've, we've been able to stay relevant. And, and when you're relevant in a league like the Big East, um, you can walk in any living room nationally and have an opportunity to recruit those young men. We'll go to a question on the Zoom from uh, Matt DeMarinas. Matt, go ahead. Thank you. Mac, uh, you know, you guys have talked a lot this year about process and patience and um, not getting caught up in results, but by all accounts, the locker room, you know, after Villanova especially was pretty emotional. Um, it just doesn't seem like your guys are satisfied with just making the tournament. Do you get that same vibe? Yeah, you know, and actually, uh, Matt, I was, I, I don't know if pleasantly surprised is the right way to say it. Uh, the emotion in that locker room after that loss to, get to Villanova was incredible. As a coach, I probably wasn't quite ready for what I encountered when I got in that locker room. And, uh, you know, the guys had, they, they were well aware that we'd been in that championship game three times and, and were, weren't able to kick the door down. So I think they really wanted it. Uh, for our program and for our fans, uh, you know, to be the first team to to win a Big East tournament title, uh, so it was it was extremely emotional. And but as I've said many times this season, it's this group really cares. Uh, so 
in hindsight, I should not have been surprised by what I saw uh, because I've really experienced it all season long. You see it when Art got hurt, you saw it when Kalkbrenner got hurt at UConn, when R2 went down. Uh, the, the genuine concern and care for their teammates, like this group is pretty special in that regard. So um, I'm really confident that they're not just satisfied to be here. I want them to enjoy the experience. I want them to look around. I want them to smell the roses uh, because there's, there's you know, 250, 60 some teams across the country that would love to be here and they're not here. Uh, and we're one of the, the fortunate ones. So you have to enjoy the experience and it's my job as a coach to make sure they do that. Um, but they're not satisfied just to be here and play in this game Thursday. We're, we're here to try to advance. Back left. Uh, Mark Ziegler, San Diego Union Tribune. Um, two things. Um, are these two programs kind of similar in the sense that I mean, you guys obviously started a mid-major conference and have sustained success over a long time and kind of win with culture as much as anything else? Yeah, you know, it's, we're similar in the sense is, you know, Dana Altman coached there 16 years and I'm on 12, so we've had two coaches in 28 years, and I don't know how long Fish was there before Dutch took over, but there hasn't been a lot of changes, and I think uh, when that's the case, you have an opportunity to sustain success. But, um, you know, I'd, I, I've known Coach Fisher and, and been on trips with him and Angie and tried to teach him play poker in a back room somewhere on these trips, so I've known him a long time. Uh, and as a result, I've gotten to know Dutch, and you know they just do a terrific job with their program. And it's uh, you, you know what you're going to get. Uh, you know it's going to be very disciplined, hard nosed, uh, playing basketball the right way. And and uh, you know we'd like to think that uh, we're that type of program as well. And, and you mentioned something earlier about um, building um, through the draft and and through freshmen. And, and Dutch talks about that a lot. That it's tough to maintain culture. Um, with a bunch of transfers who, who aren't familiar with it. Um, maybe could you, could you elaborate a little bit on, on what you mean and, and what you think about that? Yeah, approach? you know, I, I think you have to bring in the right transfers. Uh, and, you know, gener generally speaking, uh, transfers are usually looking for something that they don't have when they're moving to the next spot. So they have some high expectations. So you really got to kind of dig deep and find out what's at their core and is, you know, is how, how important is winning versus team success. And, you know, we've been fortunate with this group, with Alex O'Connell and Keyshawn Fizel and, and Ryan Hawkins, that they're about all the right things. And not only have, have we been able to maintain the culture that we've had, I think they've helped us build our culture uh, because of the examples that they've set for all the young people in our program, and we have a bunch of them. Uh, so, um, you have to take the right people, and uh, we've been lucky uh, that we've been able to do that. And uh, I think San Diego State certainly falls into that same category. Back right. Anna Bellinghausen with the Omaha Sports Commission. Coach, when in the season did you realize that this team is special and that you guys could go on a run? I would probably say that the game at UConn. Uh, came off a really difficult loss at home to Xavier. Uh, we're up 17 at halftime, got outscored, you know, something 32 to 2 or some crazy run to start the second half. Uh, that's a tough one to bounce back from uh, when you have your building so energized and you, you, you totally take the air out of the building because of your performance. Um, and then you're going to a place, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're the only team that beat UConn at UConn with Sonoga this year with their, with their full lineup. Um, and we did it without Kalkbrenner the last 15 minutes. So when that happened and I saw, saw the team kind of, you know, it kind of galvanized right in front of my eyes that second half, that last 15 minutes. And rather than using it as an excuse, uh, they took it as an opportunity. And, you know, we had, some, we had a lineup out there that had not really played together. Uh, and found a way to win a gutsy, grinded out game against a really good UConn team. And I think from that point forward, I, that told me what we were capable of. And that was our job as a coaching staff to try to keep them healthy and keep them fresh. Because as we lost guys, you know, you're, certainly your bench becomes really thin. And the way Jeremy Anderson, our strength coach, and Ben McNair, our trainer, have, have, have communicated with me on managing practice time uh, to get us to the finish line uh, is a big reason that we're here. One more on the left. These low scoring, slow paced, the game like a game like Villanova, Rock Fights, a wrestling match you called it uh, in Omaha. 
What does it take to, to win those games? Well, first of all, you, you, better, you better match their intensity and discipline defensively because <clears throat> you, you, if it's going to be hard to find an open shot. And if that's the case, you better make sure it's hard to find an open shot on the other end as well. Uh, and you, you really have to do your best to try to avoid uh, in a game that's probably going to be low scoring. Uh, you can't have a 12 to two run against you. You know, that, that can be very difficult. Uh, to come back from. So, you know, we have to keep pace and, you know, we, we play at a little faster tempo than they do. Uh, we, we'd like to try to impose that will on them a little bit. Um, you know, with the longer TV timeouts, we should have enough in our tank to do that. Uh, but it's, you know, it's going to be a physical game. And some people it might not be pleasing to the eye. To me, it's beautiful because it's, it's two teams that really understand who they are defensively and, and and I think both teams do a pretty good job of trying to take away what the other team wants to do. So who's going to be able to get to that second and third option and be successful with that, I think is probably in, in the long run going to determine who wins the game. We can do one more. Matt, given the challenges you face with this team this year, having such a young group, dealing with these injuries, and the way you talk about them, has this been one of your more enjoyable seasons as a coach? No question, and I think you hear coach speak all the time about this is the best, and this was the best, and this is my most fun, but I, 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 this is the first time in my career I've been really part of a team that had, you know, O'Connell and Fiesel and Hawkins who are 23, 24 years old, and then you have 18 and 19 years old, and you don't have really much in between. Um, and just to watch the dynamic and develop in terms of their relationships has been so much fun to sit back and watch and you know you you got to mentor and you got to stick your nose in there and make sure they're thinking about the right things um, but this team has been so responsive to to my coaching staff they've been uh, responsive to each other and you know as the season has gone on as you listen to as you listen to the questions that the freshmen are asking now compared to november and december you, you can see how much more they understand what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it. And um, that's, that's been awesome to see from a coaching perspective. So this has been a very, very rewarding uh, season because a lot of times when you have as much adversity as we've had Sharif and R2, you know, we're, those were our two point guards to start the year. We don't have either of them right now. Uh, when teams are able to overcome that and not just stay where they were but actually improve, uh, from a coaching perspective, it doesn't get any better. Uh, you've, it, it, it probably signifies that you're, our staff's doing something right. And the way we're going about it, they've learned, they've listened. You talk about adversity and how to bounce back from it. But when it happens, can you really do it? And to see it happen in front of your eyes and watch them respond from it, um, it's been really incredible and, and an awful lot of fun. So you know, that's why I hope we can extend this season. I'm not, not quite ready to be done with this group yet. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you.